Hey guys, um, a very quick video to show a setup of a VDB fracture in Houdini 17.5 and that's a cool way to deal with meshes which are kind of inconsistent, that have uh, high complexity or complexity is very uh, unevenly distributed or you know, all these difficult things that you deal with when you're getting some very um, high density assets uh, from modeling. And uh, the, this approach allows you to kind of abstract yourself from the geometry because what's going to be happening is that you would not deal with the renderable geometry directly. We're going to turn the, that into a, uh, into a volume and we will create uh, the proxy geometry that we're going to be simulating with from that volume and eventually turn this volume back into a mesh and render that. So we're not going to be rendering the source geometry at all. We just we are going to render a kind of mesh which is created from the volume representation of that. And this is letting us abstract ourselves from any uh, kind of unpleasantness in the source geometry. Uh, also the, um, adapt, uh, the uh, uh, simulation geometry that we can create is letting us uh, have a very controlled and fast uh, simulation. So I have started here with our trusty pig and I had a subdivide to it just so we can get uh, some kind of something that represents a little bit more detail. And that's the joint that you're going to render. And after that, uh, converting it to an, to an SDF. So this is kind of our main resolution control here. And this will be defining basically how accurate the whole thing is. So you can uh, do high resolution for stuff closer to the camera and uh, vice versa. And the VDB fracture mode here is um, breaking this uh, field, this SDF that we have built based on uh, some cutter geometry and some points that the cutter geometry is scattered on. Uh, I have implemented here the most simple case, but this can be obviously you know, elaborated significantly. So just a sphere with the mountain and then some points on the geometry of the peak, which I shuffle around so they don't come back on the surface. And uh, the VDB fracture uh, visualizes in a nice way the fragments that it makes. So you see this multicolored um, SDF. And then the key part here is that we split off at this point into two. So uh, this branch is going to be the collision geometry and this branch is going to be the fracture geometry. So for the collision geometry, there is this very nice VDB to spheres node and this is going to convert all, all our uh, complex uh, here, you know, shapes into some very bullet friendly uh, spheres uh, proxy. And I'm going to assemble that so uh, it's prepared for uh, the region voiceover. Now on the other side, um, I convert the VDB uh, surface field in, back into a mesh and you can see that it has different topology from the original mesh that we had. Uh, but because you connect the, the input here, uh, when it converts the VDB uh, into, the, into a mesh, it is aware of that original mesh and it's going to snap the uh, points where, it need, where they need to be, so you get your accurate outlines and you can do things like uh, sharpen features, which is going to give you like better uh, detail at the creases and you can do transfer service attributes, which you know would be for your UVs and the stuff that you, extra stuff that you need to render with. Unexploded view uh, is going to show you the inside so you can see how your fracture is working and that's going to be the fracture geometry. Now into the um, RBD solver uh, we put the collision geometry into an RDB packed object uh, and that's quite fast to simulate. Um, kind of and the great thing is in the <laughs> absolutely independent from, this, from the resolution of your original uh, geometry. And um, you can either show the guides or you can show um, the, the render geometry. You can pipe here in the, in the SOP. So you can preview uh, both of these when you need as you are doing your 
development. Uh, the rest of the stuff is quite trivial. Um, I think the only uh, important thing here is that you say create complex help from per set of connected primitives because a set of connected primitives is uh, getting recognized from the assembled uh, spheres that we have uh, given it. You can see, I think, in the assembly that um, the name attributes that the VDB fracture has, has built on the primitives is getting passed to the points. And it's important to cut to, yeah, to, I just skipped to uh, have this uh, create name attribute here um, because this would override the attribute that the VDB fracture has created and that's, you know, it's cool to keep that. So, the rest of the stuff is quite trivial, you know, the bullet solver, the gravity, and then I get the um, object from the uh, dot network and use transform pieces to drive the render geometry with that. And you can see I don't have anything like, you know, assemble here, everything is just uh, left as pieces, which is completely sufficient to get all that going. Um, I, were, I was doing kind of assembly uh, beforehand to have this, uh, to also assemble that, but I was running into uh, problems with the normals that I had to recompute, and um, eventually it turned out you don't need to assemble this stuff at all. Uh, I think eventually you would need to pack it, I guess, because, uh, you know, for rendering reasons. Uh, but I think after uh, this, ha this would happen after uh, the maybe the transformation has taken part, so um, it would preserve all the data that you need. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Very, um, very cool Houdini workflow uh, that allows you to fracture things and uh, do rigid volume simulation, abstracting yourself from the complexities of the underlying geometry. Thank you.